You wanna know what really grinds my gears? When you're a gorbel and then comes up on your ding and then I'm like, ma, peanut butter. What, what do you mean cut? Whoa, that was intense. Hey guys, Nathan here. Now I'm not saying we should fight for censorship or anything, but sometimes it's a necessary evil. Maybe someone says something that they're not supposed to and you have to blur it out. Or maybe you're shooting something in public and someone in the background just doesn't want to be in the video but you still have to use the take anyway. There's many different ways to go about doing this and in this video we're going to go over a few different methods to add sensors to your videos. But before we get into that be sure to hit the like button down there and get subscribed for lots more content like this. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and this method can totally be done in the free version. So we just have our shot of our actor here. I'm gonna slip some headphones on. So if we press play on the video, I don't actually swear or anything. I just say a bunch of nonsense. So first word we wanna blur is gorble. When you're touching a gor gorble. So we'll literally just grab our blade tool. You can also press B on the keyboard. Make a cut at the beginning of the waveform. Gorble. Yeah, right at the end. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go back to our selection tool with A, and I'm just gonna take this volume and bring it all the way down. Touching a and Perfect, so now we don't have any audio there. Now you can add whatever sound you want to cover it. I just downloaded some bleeps from the internet, but there's a ton of different things you can do, or you could even make your own sounds if you want, just for some fun. We're gonna go in, add our beep. We notice it's a little too long, but that's no worries. We'll just grab our blade tool, make a cut. So now we just have to blur out the mouth area. We're gonna go click there, go into our color page, and then let's just go into the end and we'll add a serial node. And we're going to grab a mosaic blur, which can totally be done in the free version of Resolve. Now you see we get this funky kind of 8-bit thing going on. We're gonna wanna bring our pixel frequency up quite a bit just to get it nice and blurred. And now we wanna add a window. Let's go to the beginning of our shot We'll just grab this little circle here, bring it down nice and small. Okay, great. That kind of blurs out our mouth. Maybe we can lose a few pixels. Awesome. I'm just gonna soften it up a bit just for funsies. Now, if we deselect that, we do have the mouth covered. So if we scrub through this shot, it's not very long and the mouth doesn't move a ton. You could probably get away with just leaving the blur where it is. But just to show you how to track it to the face, we're gonna go into our tracker here, make sure we're at the beginning where just things line up. We're then gonna click forward on our tracker and boom. Again, it didn't have much work to do, so it was easy peasy and our track follows all the way through. So if we go back to the edit page, we can see that play out. And that, perfect. And this is all you need to know to blur out someone's face. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. We're gonna go on into this shot here. And you see I have a couple clones of myself. If you wanna learn how to clone yourself, check out this video up here. Anyway, you can tell that this is our main actor, but this person in the back definitely doesn't want to be in the shot. So one way you can do that super simply, again, is come into the color page. We're gonna add our mosaic blur again. Bring it on. Again, it's whatever amount of pixels works for you. Grab our window tool and go with another circle. Perfect, put it over the face and then just track it to the shot. Now this is a longer shot, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to go all the way through. Perfect. Now we can just click on this here, scrub through a shot and see that the face is definitely blurred out. So that's a super easy way to do it for a pretty ideal scenario. But if you had the person who didn't want to be viewed, maybe walk behind your actor, things would definitely get more complicated and that would require its own video. So let me know down in the comments if you want to see anything about that, because it will be a little bit more in detail. But let's go back to the censoring of the mouth. So using the same method I showed you in the beginning, we've already cut out the swearing segments of our video and used that first method in these first two shots. But what if in this next shot, they actually want us to put a graphic over top of the swear word because maybe the blur just doesn't quite cut it. So here's the easiest way you can go about doing that. I'm just going to add some text, literally go over here into the text titler shrink it down to the size that I need. We're gonna use the font that I think works for this situation pretty well. And I'm just going to turn that black. So we can then put our text in here that we want. Maybe we'll go with something like this. 
Perfect. Just for bonus marks to make it stand out, I'm just gonna go in and get some white behind this text. An easy way to do this that is a little janky, you go in, create a solid color, bring it in underneath. Okay, perfect. We're then going to make this white underneath here and then literally just crop in. And then you just click on that, right click it, compound clip, name it whatever you want. And now you have your super janky graphic there's probably a million better ways to do it, but that's just a quick way that I use sometimes. So now we just want to position it over the offending area. Maybe we can make it a bit smaller, bring it down into position. Again, this is a super easy way of doing this. I'm going to check the first frame. going to add some keyframes here just at the beginning. Maybe go to the middle. Again, we're not having a ton of movement in this scenario, so this is a super simple way of doing this. Our second last frame, maybe we need to bring it up again. Awesome. So now we scroll through and it follows our actor. And it does follow our actor, but it's super quick and dirty. And if you have a longer scene, it can be a lot more work. So I'll show you how to actually track their face in Fusion to add a graphic over top. So we're gonna go into our final censored shot and you can see it is a bit longer with a bit more movement. We're gonna go into the Fusion page and that will generate a Fusion clip. And now we wanna track the motion. So we'll go back to the beginning of our shot. I'm going to hit shift spacebar on my keyboard just to bring up my tool selector. And we wanna grab a planar tracker. So we'll add our planar tracker there. Now we just wanna find a good place to track. I honestly think my big nose here will probably get the job done just fine, but it's whatever works for your shot. Okay, great, we've drawn a little box around my nose. I'm then going to set that as our first frame. And the motion type that you wanna use really depends on the particular shot you're doing. For this situation, I really don't think we need to deal with rotation too much, so we'll just go with translation and track the shot. Perfect, easy peasy, it's not super long, so it did a quick job. Now we want to go in and create a planar transform. We now have all the transformation data in this little node. So we're off to a great start, but we need to bring our media in that we want to use as our graphic. So we can go into our media pool and grab what the producers have recommended, which is of course, Macho Man Randy Savage, snap into a Slim Jim. We're going to drag that into our shot. We can click this little dot here to bring him into the viewer. And yes, that is indeed Macho Man Randy Savage. So now we're gonna drag that into the planar transform and we can click on this planar tracker down here, shift spacebar MRG to bring up our merge node. And now we just drag that onto the foreground. Now great, we got Macho Man there and it is tracked to the shot, but we, the sizing isn't quite right. So we wanna click on this planar transform, press shift spacebar again and grab a transform node. Okay, we're gonna throw that on and now we can resize and scale things and move everything as we need it. And then just fit it to whatever size works for your project. And once you're happy with that, be sure you're linked into your media out. You can then go back into the edit page and find that everything is graded and that Macho Man has been successfully added to your shot. And you can use that to add any particular graphic you want. Now you may have noticed in the beginning that we had all this crazy movement and zooming in. And one way you could do that is you could go through and make a compound clip out of all these different shots, but super easy way to do it. I just did all of the motion on the adjustment layer. And if you wanna learn how to do that, you can check that out in my adjustment layer video up here. So anyway, folks, I hope that taught you a little bit about adding sensors and graphics and tracking them to your videos, and maybe you can use it in your own projects. If you like that, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. And as a fun little stat, about 86% of the folks that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you do click that subscribe button, well, you'll just make my day, I tell you what. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye. You wanna know what really grinds my gears? When you're touching a gorbel and then a snorbel comes up on your ding ding and then I'm like, Ma, I'm in here with the peanut butter. What, what do you mean cut? How's that? That's good. <laughs> how can I even ask you how was that? You're like, what did I just see? Yeah, I